Well, happy Friday. Happy Friday. And thanks to Thor, Eric, and some other viewers for uh, getting us a tab down at Cardinal Coffee. Yeah, it's great. I've never paid for a coffee down there. I mean, it's excellent. You just walk in, you so, tell them who you are, you get your coffee. This. There uh, you Mexican go. mocha. <clears throat> Mexican mocha for you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. I got, uh, what is this thing? This is some kind of Irish cream thing? Mm. Man, it's good. <laughs> mm. All right, here we go. Have I interrupted mm. anything down there? Mm. Yeah, we're trying to have our coffees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got my man Chase with me again today, and unfortunately, we got sucky options. It's either paint white paint over white primer, or uh, put thin set down and put backer board down. This is basically the two options, and they're both terrible. So I think we'll do the backer board. You want some pancakes? Dude, I don't know what. <laughs> We're in the laundry room slash bathroom, which is the first place we're gonna get this backer board going down. And in spite of us being super meticulous in the framing and putting down this subfloor, there's still a couple of humps on some joists. And sometimes the joist just dries and it gets more crown or dip or whatever when it dries. So it's really important and it's a thing we do every time is to take a planer and just shave off the high spots so that we put our backer board down, we don't have tile, then later doing that as well. That's right. It's just like when we set a door underneath the threshold. Yeah, You Check make it. sure that spot where the door goes is perfectly flat. Yeah, it's a little extra work, but it's really worth the time, and that's why we do it. Got clogged up pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I think it was stopped up when I uh, started there. So I used to take this off every time to clean out if it got jammed up. Sure. But instead of doing that, it took forever. I drilled a hole here, and this vacuum has plenty of suction, more than you need for this tool. Um, so it doesn't really hurt the suction. No, I was using it without the vacuum is why it got stopped up. Mm. And even, even without this, this thing gets stopped up pretty bad. So we should be good to go now. I think we'll do a bifold, yeah, 48. All right, 48, bifold set, entry, closet. You guys wanna write the jam on them? Is there gonna be, oh. Just in case there's any wacky, are there any wacky jams? I don't think there jams? are any wacky jams. They're all? They're all just the, the regular. They're all the same. I've been writing what yeah. each one is too. Two four lefty mechanical. Yeah. Something interesting about the way these door sizes are notated is that we're doing it in feet and inches, and that's what they usually want, like the millwork guys. So this is a two foot, eight inch right hand door, and that's the size of the slab, not the size of the whole jam and everything. And this two foot, eight inch door slab will go in a rough opening that's two foot, 10 inches. So you could get really wacky here, especially if you wrote down two, four without a dash, and you would think, oh, that's 24 inches, two feet, no two foot, four inches. It's just something to note if you're gonna order doors, ask them, do you want feet and inches or do you want just inches? Mm -hmm. Jason, so this is this is tough because it's white primer. It's basically white paint. It's big, yeah, it oh, is And white. your glasses, <laughs> there you go. Um, so right now it looks terrible, but I think it's just the sheen of the wet versus stuff that's dried. Is this already painted out? Yeah, that looks better. Okay. It's really piece? hard to tell. Ah, oh, crap. We're gonna have to sand this. We're gonna have to sand this. Go, let's point. go ahead and hit that spot with a hand and a hand sander real quick and then recoat. It's still wet. Mm. Mm. Uh, next, I need a two foot eight right hand. My personal preference is to really use this grid pattern that's on this hardy backer. Um, I don't use a square. I can just kind of hand draw these cutouts for our registers and keep them nice and straight. And I'm just cutting with this nibbler thing, so it's not like it's super accurate anyway, but that saves me some time. Oh, you're going right there? Yep, that's it. That's it right there. 
We're at the cut station and I'm gonna give you guys the honest truth is that some of these cuts that are curved are about impossible with something that's meant to cut for a straight line. So what I'm doing is I'm just pecking this thing with a crowbar like this. And you know what? This may look really crude and, and like terrible, but it's working fantastic. And so we're just, you know, not recommending this, but this is working great. So. You know, I'm gonna clean that up and go right around the toilet flange. I think that was way faster too. And I, and I did the same thing on this little hole. Get in on that. Man, I just took the corner of the thing, peck, 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 peck. And uh, that was super fast. And it's, it don't matter. It's all gonna get covered by tile. Isn't that how they used to do slate and stuff? They just- Probably had like a hatchet. Peck holes and yeah. So, hey, that's really how we're doing it though. It's, we're gonna call it the old school technique. Yeah, and it worked and there's no dust, so. I love that part. Yeah. All right, here's a quiz for you. How many screws does it take to screw down one three by five sheet of backer board? If yeah. you follow the screw spacing guide. So right. yeah, time out, five seconds, write in the comments. Pause the video. Four. Two. Take a guess. Three, two, one. Okay, I guess 50, just roughly. I said, man, I bet there's 50 screws in this one piece. You know why? My back is already hurting, I'm sweating. I thought that was a lot well, of How screws. many is it? Oh, I, th I think it's 54. <laughs> okay. Well, you counted. 54 is the answer. Good job right. if you wrote it 54. down, 54. 54 in just one sheet. Oh. This episode is brought to you by EcoFlow and they make eco-friendly power solutions that allow you to have silent power in any location. And we're coming at you today from the beach. Founded by leading creators in the drone industry, EcoFlow makes lightweight, portable power stations that can be used for home backup, outdoors, or on the job site. I've been using the EcoFlow Delta Max and the EcoFlow solar charging panel, which comes in this nice carrying case. It can run up to a 1400 watt saw on the job site or an 1800 watt AC, and it's been a lifesaver for me on the job as well as camping. It has six AC outlets, four USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, a car charger outlet, and two DC5521 outlets. And it's the world's strongest battery generator with super fast charging. It'll charge from zero to 80% in one hour. Not used to this heat down at the coast. For me, it's really nice to have a battery generator that's completely silent, has clean, consistent power, and has none of the issues of trying to start a gas engine on a gas power generator. EcoFlow Delta also offers many varying models in the Delta line, depending on your specific power needs. If you're in the market for any of their products, EcoFlow is running a huge promo for Prime Day as we speak, some up to $900 off. Check out the links in the description below to find out more about EcoFlow's amazing line of products and details on their Prime Day promo for July 4th through July 17th. Thanks again to EcoFlow. I keep wondering why it's so dark and realize I got my sunglasses on. I keep <laughs> I thinking they're my, no, I thought they were my regular safeties. I thought they were having a mistake too. <laughs> You know, I'm not a huge fan of Phillips head anything. Right? <laughs> this either. bit put six screws in and now it's toast. Wow. Look how it's twisted. Oh, it is toast. It's twisted. Yeah, you can't even do it now. How many good. bits did you bring with you today? Well, I've already used two and I've only put down three pieces of uh, board. So if, if my math is right, that's like 165 screws. Yeah. Three. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I hardly ever use these little short ones. You know, they come in a set and you yeah. always have like a bunch of them. So since I'm using a driver, I can just use up a bunch of these okay. and just burn them up because I've got like dozens of them. Okay, I have something important to say. <laughs> as much as I hate to switch to the impact driver for these screws, with the Phillips head, it is way better. Chase! It's way better. Got a job for you, bud. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> the reason I don't like the noise. Yeah, these it make is more noise. Uh, I got some ears for Chase. But these, it just works so good. Okay. You can't beat it. Roger. That's amazing. So we're gonna pause for a couple little pro tips that we're doing to make this easier. Number one is I got a notepad 
Mm. And since we're cutting outside, I'm just drawing out each one with the numbers. Handing it, there's Jono, handing it to Jono. And uh, notice that that one is ripped, even the full depth part is ripped. Mm. And that's so we don't get this little fin around the corner. This is gonna break off around there. I'm cutting it at the corner. And the second one is, we're troweling this out. We've got this a little loose. And I'm only letting it float off of one corner of the trowel as I'm doing it so they don't get build up on the side I've already gone through. So I got the angle and get over here, Jamie. I'm pushing it down the line like that so that it's See. only going that way. Let me get a look at your bead here. Yeah. And that's a lot easier than having to come back and get a bunch of thick spots later. Wow, we did awesome filming this part. Yeah, so yeah, ones. our apologies on the filming, but that's that's it. That's all we're doing. doing here is putting these little puck lights in this soffit. The reason there's a soffit is because there's plumbing up here that we had to hide. And this is a bathroom. So the problem is we're gonna have a vanity, a mirror, and then there's not enough height for the vanity light above the mirror. And so we planned ahead. That's why the wire just magically was up there when we cut the hole uh, to do these little four inch puck lights. And I think you call them like a retro light. They clip to the drywall. So it's a really nice thing for something like this, a situation that we don't normally run into. We'll let you get back to work. He's just and standing there like- Hey, I gotta say too, we, <laughs> he's, he's revving it up ready to go. The reason we didn't put a real can in there, there's not room for a real no, can up there's in there. Not. There's not, there's pipes. Because of plumbing. There's pipes. Yeah, these are like super slim, low profile. Man, it's a dream. Beautiful. The electricians are having a meeting in the mines because there's no uh, receptacle here, and there should be. Should. Be. should uh, that means there probably is, right? Should. Be. And we think it's right there. Yes. He wants to do the honors of destroying <laughs> drywall. Jared's got this. All right, we're gonna see here if we just run the drywall if there's really one. to know it wasn't there. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, I see a box down in there, Jared. Well, good. We wasn't it's in there. I think it's I think it's right there. Missed it by that much. Yeah, so, no, good call. I, I'd rather find this stuff now than have y'all flipping on breakers and nothing's working and, so, good job. This is gonna be terrible. I mean, so. I would offer to help you, but. I did dry fit it so I knew it fits. Oh, he, he might actually... I might get it for a shot here. No oh, way. wow! I didn't think it was going to be that easy. Oh, well, that wasn't bad. Wow! <laughs> that was going to be terrible. Hey, do I think like yeah. Superman, Woo! Iron Man, yeah. Spider-Man, all like Woo! that. You're a real-life superhero, you know that, bro? Like, uh, <laughs> Construction your man! Your dad, dad's a real-life superhero, <laughs> did you know that? Uh, I don't know about sometimes. Uh... Come on, bro! <laughs> Dude, he is. He should be wearing a cape. Yeah. Jono just said it looked like we just installed a cornhole board right there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of does. Yeah. Uh, cornhole? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, okay. That's what it's called. Good. <laughs> we didn't test fit this one. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Oh. Yeah. oh, yeah. 
I was lucky. One back, we got really sweaty, and Jason changed shirts four times a day. But we got first coat of paint on, primer, sanded, backer board down. First thing next week, hit the tile. Tile three. Oh, and we got the cable rails done. <laughs> He's helping me over there. And we hauled He's the trash. Like, look, and we hauled the trash. So next week, uh, we're cruising good. Hit the tile. Hardwood's coming Tuesday morning. Cabinets are at the shop. We're gonna finish this place. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. I almost can't believe it. Oh I almost gosh. can't believe this handrail is still sitting here. Chase, <laughs> he's testing out the stirability already. It's good. Let's go to the house. We were just talking to the homeowner on the phone and we told her the cables were done and she wanted a picture of it. And we're like video guys. Like we can't send a crappy picture. So we've just spent like five minutes literally looking around like, all right, what's the best angle? What's the best shot? And Jason's got it. What's the shot? Right here, man. Right here. Okay. So looking from this, this section way. to that section with the view in the background. Yeah, almost more over this way. Oh, okay. On the angle right there. Okay. The railing and the caps. That's the shot. Because if we send a really crappy photo, they're going to know. You guys know about video and photos. And you didn't even try. So yeah, that's a shot. Right <laughs> that's there. a lot of pressure on us, but we're we're willing to take it. Yeah, that's why we make the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs>